Hi everyone, it's Ajit Amit here and welcome to my review of the PW Orpheus cable um, shielding, which is perhaps the most expensive cable you can buy on the market right now among the more recognizable cables. I'm carrying this cable in this sort of uh, dedicated sort of a uh, carrying case for it, which I got custom made. And I'll leave links to these custom cases. I have a couple of these custom cases that I'll talk about at the end of this video. So do watch till the end for that. These are some very nice cases I got made from this friend of mine who's now making these cases in India. This is like a Python case he calls a Viper case. And of course, this is like a Crocs case. It's not actually Crocs skin, but he does use very fine quality leather. So this is an empty case with this, you know, new European pouch. I'll come to all this later. But to jump right into the review of the cable, the PW Orpheus Orf shielding cable, which is a $6,000 cable, 5,800 on the Music Tech website, which can sometimes be had at open box prices and all that. So I want to talk about this cable, but also, I also want to do a larger discussion on tweaking IMs because, I mean, if you are watching this video, I, I hope it's with, the, with an interest to explore this cable and perhaps even buy this cable because it's an amazing cable, which automatically rules out a lot of viewers. And the other thing that's interesting about my viewers is that because I have, you know, I began my journey as a pure and simple audiophile, and I've been writing reviews, written reviews on HeadFi, and then I gradually transitioned to this universe of YouTube videos. I do feel and I do know for a fact that a lot of my viewers are among the more spendy types, which is fine, which is just what it is. Uh, and audio for the longest time, right? Like growing up, I was around audiophiles such as my uncle, a couple of uncles as a matter of fact, and growing up around my audiophile uncles, the hobby for the longest part for several decades was for people who were spendy, right? It's, it is an expensive hobby. I'm just opening up a bunch of cases so I can talk about things that, you know, with greater ease. So the hobby for the longest time was about expensive stuff. I mean, the hobby was meant to be expensive. It was a bit like watches, collecting watches. However, over the last several months, several years, I'm, I'm sorry, um, the entry point and the barrier to entry into the hobby has reduced dramatically, especially because of Chinese IMs and Chinese cables and even Chinese headphones and Chinese amplifiers, Chinese speakers, etc. The things in China do cost a lot less to produce, a lot less to produce because of the cost of labor. So that's there. So the hobby now has become slightly more contentious as now you have people who are you know, who can buy and procure really high quality products, IMs, headphones for reasonably low prices, which makes them question why some people spend as much as $5,200 on a jewel or $4,800 on a Feiwan or on expensive tips. For instance, these Elatic Borough tips, I think I spent about 30 Singaporean dollars to buy them. So, and of course, it's super expensive cable. So a lot of people will question, why would you buy a $6,000 cable when, you know, people are going without food, people are, uh, uh, $6,000 can put kids to school, uh, 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 can even perhaps finance the education of a person for the entirety of his or her life in certain developing countries. $6,000 is a lot of money. Even in developed economies, this can be used to buy a car, invest in a business, invest in a startup, what have you. So I'm not going to shy away from the fact that $6,000 is an insane amount of money for buying cables, but... At the same time, if you have the, if you assume that people should be allowed to buy what they can consume, what they can afford, and people should be rewarded for their hard work, for their talents, for their investments in, in, in themselves. And if someone gets pleasure, because this hobby ultimately is about pleasure, right? It's about peace. It's about happiness. It's about serenity. And if someone gets serenity from owning a $6,000 cable to say nothing about the sound that it does produce, and it does have a fantastic sound. I'll talk about that. I don't think pitchfork should come out when we talk about expensive cables. So with that sort of context out of the way, so you understand where I'm coming from when I talk about the PW Orpheus shielding, I do think it's very important in this hobby to have a live, live and let live sort of an attitude because that's what helps us get along. That's what makes this hobby interesting. Debates are obviously interesting, but debates I think have their place, but then, you know, Pitchfork's coming out because someone is reviewing cables or someone else is buying $6,000 cables. Someone might have a $100,000 setup for IM. Someone might have a $500,000 setup for speakers. I mean, to each his own, right? I mean, if people are making money in the best possible ways, spending time, talent, energy, I mean, we should be in a position where we can applaud that. We should not 
begrudge people for spending money. And I don't mean to sound preachy, guys, but I do get annoyed when I see some rich shaming in the hobby. Because first and foremost, like if you understand where this hobby comes from, which is the world of two channel, I mean, two channel guys spend an insane amount of money on cables. They spend an insane amount of, amount of money on DAX, on amplifiers. I mean, in two channel, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars will just get you started in the hobby, right? So I do wish that our universe or sub universe was slightly more tolerant of each other's spending patterns. So the Orpheus comes from a Hong Kong based manufacturer called Peter Wong. And Peter Wong, I've actually interacted with. I initially considered buying a cable outright from him, but my conversations uh, took their time, took their course, and eventually I decided to buy it from Music Tech. You've seen me praise Music Tech in the past, but that's also because how decisive they are and when they talk to you, when you, you know, uh, deal with them, when you uh, uh, pay them, and how quickly they ship the cable out to you. So eventually I did not end up buying the cable from Peter Wong. I ended up buying it from Music Tech. And honestly, I recommend that approach for others watching because that's how I got mine. Uh, uh, it's no sort of diss on, on Peter Wong, of course. I'm sure he's a gentleman and great to work with. But I just had a phenomenal time working with Andrew of Music Tech to get this cable in. So this cable is a 4.4 termination, has a 4.4 termination at the amp side, two pin as is pretty evident. This sort of two color theme going on with this beautiful shade of black and this beautiful shade of sort of like a navy blue. It's a copper cable. It's a pure copper cable. It has four cores inside, 26 AWG, and it sounds marvelous. It sounds marvelous to the point that I feel like this gives me more analogishness and a bit of mid bass warmth while giving me this pretty impressive spaciousness that I don't find almost with any other cable. And I own the Centurion, and I'll talk about the Centurion in a separate review. The Centurion is good at a few things that perhaps. The Centurion perhaps trumps the Orpheus in a few uh, areas, and I'll talk about that separately in the Centurion review. But this one is about the Orpheus and how this Orpheus has helped, you know, the how I've used Orpheus to bring out the best in two IMs that I consider almost perfect. Aroma Audio Jewel has long been my favorite IM, and I still think it's my in my top two. And recently I've added the Fei Wan, which is theoretically a side grade, but a lot of my friends who've been hearing the Fei Wan are saying that this is a definitive tonal upgrade over the Jewel while retaining its tremendous sense of resolution. So don't be too bugged with the fact that this is slightly lower priced than the Jewel. Audio can be somewhat in the category of Veblen goods, which in economics has a, has a theor theoretical underpinning behind it, which is that some goods, so most goods will experience a drop in demand if there is a hike in price. That's economic theory. But Veblen goods, a lot of times luxury goods, whether it's luxury watches and oftentimes, you know, luxury bags, there are times when they experience an uptick in demand if there is an increase in price. And these are Veblen goods. These are not for everybody, of course, which is fine. And, and so I just want to uh, point out that although this is slightly, ever so slightly cheaper than the Jewel, this is at the same level of technical performance as the Jewel. And a lot of my friends are now saying that they prefer it tonally to the Jewel. I would withhold judgment on the Fei Wan because this will get its own review. But I'll just say that this is an amazing IM. This can be the one IM that you own and get be done with everything else. But more on the Fei Wan later. So I will talk about how I've tweaked the Fei Wan and the Jewel, focusing on the Jewel mostly. And I, I'll show you a bunch of tips that I use because a lot of you will buy the notion that tips can change sound because it's measurable on a frequency response. And tips do change sound. So I'll talk you guys through tips as well because I got these Baroque tips in recently and I got the Courier brass tip, uh, tips in re recently. These are the spin fit double flange tips, which are, I find pretty comfortable. And these are the Asla Sedna tips. So tips do change sound guys, but perhaps not to the same degree that the cable does. So we talk a bit about sound first and, and the jewel. The jewel in its stock tuning is very, very uh, melodic. It's very musical. It has a wonderful mid range. The vocals sound very, very uh, enchanting. It's very musical. It's musical for days. It's got a decent bass presentation. The bass is not superly punchy, but you have to tip roll to get more bass out. There's a bit of timidity, I think, a timidness in around the four to seven kilohertz range in the lower treble range. So you might lose a, just a bit of incisiveness in the treble, but overall it's wonderful for a nice relaxed listen. And if you tweak the jewel a bit, add more air, etc., on the Sony W1ZM2, which I've loved, which I think is my favorite DAP, 
you can get the jewel to sound magnificent. And then you have a plethora of options on the Sony in terms of filters that I'm showing you right now with which you can further tweak the sound of the jewel. So the DSW Ultimate just does make the jewel slightly more incisive. The DC face linearizer gives it a little more body and you can of course even tweak it further because you see type B standard here and you can, you know, all these very minute permutations do have an effect on the sound. Dynamic normalizer, uh, uh, you know, it works to minimize volume differences between songs. The vinyl processor has different types. So the standard uh, vinyl processor has a different sound from the turntable and it's, it will be very evident. In some cases, like these will make the vocals more uh, thicker. In some cases, it'll make the vocal vocals more pronounced. And even and in almost all cases with the vinyl processor, you'll get slightly less treble glare if that matters to you. The DSU remastering I often use with the Jewel because it does make the Jewel more incisive. So that's to, that's to show you the multiple ways in which you can tweak the sound of your favorite monitors. You don't have to buy an Orpheus. You can get a DAP and you can use filters. Not to suggest that every DAP will have the same effect with their filters. In a lot of cases, filters will have a minimal effect or a more subliminal effect not a very pronounced effect. In the case of the Sony DAP, they have their own uh, DAC system here. The Sony engineers are masterclass and you get a tremendous, even if minute, but noticeable and perceptible difference in filters. So that does make a world of difference to how a lot of different tracks, whether you go from metal to rock to vocal sound, you can choose to dial in more body to vocals. You can choose to dial in more treble or, or air frequencies to the sort of, you know, symbol presentation if you want more splash in symbols. The Sony does that but it's super expensive. It's $3,700, but you can get the Sony to tweak the sound and it's cheaper than the cable. So of course, if you want to pair your IMs with a high quality source, that should be a higher priority for you than to invest in a $6,000 cable. That goes without saying, this will make more of a difference. Tips make a huge difference, guys. Like I get, so because the spin fit double flange seal better, I do get slightly better sub base and I dare say a bit more incisiveness with these uh, spin fit tips. I bought this recently, the Courier brass tips, and I do get more treble incisiveness with these. I do get more lower treble incisiveness, which does fill out the lack of, you know, stock treble incisiveness that I think the Jewel has, and that this works really well with rock and metal. Megalith sounded really good with these, with the Jewel. These have an effect of diffu diffusing the sound of the Jewel more. The Jewel, to begin with, has a bit of a diffuse sound presentation. It's very, very wide. And this makes it somewhat wider and more airy. The airiness is perhaps very, very welcome, but it, it does come at the expense of a slightly more diffuse presentation. So that is perhaps not the best thing with the Jewel. And finally, the Elotech Borok tips, which I did not like at first blush, but I'm beginning to really grow fond of these tips. First and foremost, because they are supremely comfortable. They're so soft and they just have the right diameter and they fit my ear holes so perfectly that I just love wearing these. In terms of sound, they bring out a more focused upper mid range, so lead guitars and vocals sound more focused and I dare say more intimate. And you get more texture from lead guitars and vocals and you get significantly more mid bass. And which also works really well with the Jewel because the Jewel could use some punch and slam, which this provides. So tips make a difference, guys. There's no two ways about it. And I'll just remove the tips. I'll just take these away. And they have a similar effect on the Feiwan as well, right? So if, you want, if you're wondering what's your differences, how to tip roll the Jewel or the Feiwan, I hope that is of assistance to you. Despite all the spites, the fact is, once you have sorted out the tip situation and the DAP situation, you would do well to invest in a high quality cable. You don't have to go all the way up to the PW Audio Orpheus. You can get a 1950s cable from PW Audio, which many say is 90% of the performance of an Orpheus. I don't think it's 90%. I think it's perhaps 80% of, of the performance of an Orpheus. And I, I know these numbers are a bit arbitrary, but the Orpheus and the 1950s sound is basically very analog. It's very classically copper. This is more spacious. And unlike the tips like these tips, which give you more spaciousness, but makes the sound more diffuse, somehow Peter Wong is able to make this cable sound very spacious, wide, deep, holographic, I dare say, an overused word in audiophile terminologies, but it doesn't become more diffuse. If anything, it adds more body. It defini definitively, I'm sorry, adds more body to the lower mids, to the mid bass. 
So I sense that this cable paired with these Elatech Baroque tips just give the Jewel a, a lot better base in terms of mid base punch, in terms of base sustain, base decay, and base texture as well, while retaining the intimacy of the vocals, while not compromising on the massive spaciousness the Jewel is known for, slightly accentuated by the Orpheus cable. So that's it guys, Orpheus is a very unique cable. It's a special cable, it's not for everyone. It does pair even better with the Fei one because the Fei one has more air frequency. So on certain vocal tracks, because I like air, I'm a Haifam and Suzvara fan, I get the sort of breathiness to vocals that is just makes vocals so delicate and just so exciting and so lovely and just enchanting that I love these. But a lot of you might think on certain sources that are neutral bright that this air frequencies might need some taming. So that's where the PW Audio Orpheus can come in because while it does not have a treble roll off per se, it does have the effect of presenting treble in a very languid, smooth and effortless way. So this is a wonderful cable guys and I highly recommend it. And I, like I said, I recommended getting from Music Tech. And just to finish up my discussion, this is a leather case, a pure leather case made by my friend Vishy. Vishy is based out of India, he uses the highest quality products. So you get this, you know, very plush material inside. It's it's all custom made. It's a spacious one, so you can, you know, even put like a massive cable like an Orpheus inside it. The Orpheus, despite being massive, doesn't have a whole lot of weight, guys. I mean, I think I find it reasonably ergonomic and comfortable. It's not a deal breaker in terms of ergonomics and comfort. But most high-end cables, with the exception of perhaps the Centurion, are somewhat uh, uh, bigger and thicker. So this is what it looks like. You can, of course, put, you know, IMs with it. And it comes with a neoprene pouch, which is great because it's much better than the mesh pouches, especially if you live in a country that is very humid. This will protect your connectors, your cables, and your IMs because humidity can be an issue with audio. So this is one of his uh, uh, boxes. He's just started his business recently, and I promised to do him a favor and do a shout out. So I'll leave a link to his email address, to wish his e email address. And this is a pouch he also sells with it in which you can put an adapter if you wanted to. And he also has, you know, all the good stuff. Again, to keep your uh, uh, audio products free from moisture and the neoprene pouches can be custom ordered. This is not Croc skin, it's, it's, it's leather of course, but he does these amazing Croc prints and I think they're far more reasonable than I think uh, that might surprise you in terms of how reasonable and affordable these cases are. So do give Vichy some love. Uh, if you're interested in getting some of these cases, I'll, I'll leave a link to Vichy's website, his email address and his Instagram page. Uh, uh, tell him I sent you and see if he can hook you up with a discount because he's just beginning to get into his business and I suspect you might be able to get these at a lower price point right now. And of course, I talked about the Orpheus and where to buy it from. And forthcoming will be a review of these mighty IMs, which I feel will cause quite a stir in the hobby. As of now, there are a bunch of people on the water cooler head fight thread who are raving about this. And people are selling stuff to buy this and people are selling stuff even after buying this. And I just want to say that these are phenomenal. And I'll talk more about this in subsequent videos. Stay tuned for that one. And if you like this video, give it a like. Follow my channel if you have not followed it. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.